Once upon a time, minivans were the go-to vehicle for many American families. In fact, thinking about it, they were the go-to for many families around the world. Families who were looking for something that could carry a lot of stuff, seat more than five, and had enough room inside them that road trips didn't turn into recreations of National Lampoon's Grand Vacation. But over the years, minivans have fallen out of favour, their boxy, perfunctory forms pushed to the side as families embrace SUVs. And just as minivans replace the erstwhile station wagon or estate car in many markets, now the minivan is losing market share at an astonishing rate to the SUV. At one point, Every major automaker offered at least one type of minivan or MPV, that's multi-purpose vehicle for those of you in markets where the term never took hold. In fact, at the height of the minivan craze, many automakers offered more than one variant. In North America, minivans were traditionally built with rear-wheel drivetrains and large, powerful V6 or V8 engines. In Europe, meanwhile, MPVs and their smaller siblings, compact MPVs, often shared their underpinnings and sometimes even their names with already popular hatchbacks. But even in Europe, where MPVs have retained more popularity than their minivan brethren in other markets, people are still moving away from them in droves, all towards SUVs, thanks to the higher seating position, go anywhere styling, although they're not always capable of going anywhere, and perceived improved safety that SUVs offer. Yet I think the minivan could get a comeback in some parts of the world, thanks to its combination of practicality and versatility, when you add an electric vehicle drivetrain. I'm going to explain. Don't worry, I'm not going crazy. Well, not really crazy. You see, in Europe at least, MPVs that aren't based on production cars very often share a common platform with commercial vehicles, the kind of commercial vehicles that often end up being used for local delivery companies, or are sometimes customised into small RVs and bespoke work vehicles. And because there's a lot of pressure on businesses to make the switch to cleaner fleets, and there's increasing pressure on automakers to increase their average fuel fleet economies, we're starting to see automakers electrifying medium-sized commercial vehicles. Because they've got plenty of space on board for cargo and are larger than your average car, these vehicles are actually pretty good candidates for electrification, especially since it's very easy to build a commercial electric vehicle with enough range to satisfy the daily driving requirements of most daily city delivery routes. Great, I hear you say. But what's that actually got to do with electric minivans? Well, because economies of scale are always going to make electric vehicles cheaper if you make more of them, it's actually beneficial for an automaker producing a commercial electric vehicle like a van to make a passenger carrying variant too, as it expands the marketability of the vehicle. The ENV200 and Renault Kangoo ZE are, of course, two good early examples of that in the electric vehicle world. The ENV200 may have suffered initially when it came to range, although later model years did get a larger battery pack, but it wasn't actually that bad as a family car carrier, with seating for seven and plenty of flexibility. It also drove a little bit like the Nissan Leaf, with a little bit extra weight, but it actually ended up with better battery pack life because Nissan employed air conditioning for the battery pack, something it didn't do for the Nissan Leaf, because it assumed that the commercial ENV200 would get a harder life and be charged quickly more regularly than a passenger car. But this week, Mercedes-Benz officially launched its all-electric EQV luxury minivan in Europe. And unlike the ENV200 and Kangoo ZE, which, while they suited their market well, aren't great when it comes to range, the Mercedes-Benz EQV delivers on range, performance and charging capabilities. So too does its more budget-oriented sibling, the EV Totora. And they prove my point. They essentially share the same parts under the floor, but are designed for different market segments. And I think they might just rekindle people's love affair with minivans because they both manage to serve different parts of the market rather well. For those who don't know, the Mercedes-Benz e Vito, which itself is based on the internal combustion engine Vito, which is known as the Metris in North America, essentially shares its body and drivetrain with the EQV. The e Vito being the more robust utilitarian version and the EQV being the high-end car-like people carrier. 
The eVito has been on sale in Europe for some time, both as a commercial panel van and as a passenger focused commercial vehicle. That one's called the eVito Tura, but the previous generation eVito didn't deliver when it came to some pretty important things like rapid charging and long range. It had just a 41 kilowatt hour, 35 usable kilowatt hours of battery capacity and no DC quick charging. That said, it did get some market interest from airport transfer and minicab companies. But the new eVito, which was announced a few months back, and the EQV, well, they change things quite substantially. They both have the same 100 kilowatt hours, 90 kilowatt hours usable battery pack, and they both have DC quick charging as standard. They both have 150 kilowatt motors driving the front wheels, which, while it's a bit on the small side if you're talking about premium electric cars, isn't so bad for a large people carrier. They're both available in two different body lengths, and the EQV is available as a six, seven, or eight seater with an interior designed for comfort rather than utilitarian functionality. And I think they could certainly capture some market segment for families who favor a van-like build over SUVs or other options. While the price, 71,388 euro, that's a price which I should note is inclusive of a 19% sales tax in Germany, might not make it a great deal, at least initially. But consider this, the entry-level Tesla Model X is 88,990 euro in the same market. Sure, the Model Y comes in from 58,620 euro, but deliveries have only just begun for that in Europe. And for now, you could only get a five-seat Model Y. I'd love to tell you how much the eVito costs, but for now, only the previous generation model seems to be advertised on Mercedes-Benz's sites, and that wouldn't be a fair comparison. I know that many watching this wouldn't be seen dead in a minivan, but if you haven't driven an electric minivan, you may not know that electrification can really change the way that minivans drive and perform, thanks mostly to the low center of gravity that a large battery pack load on the floor gives. They can transition from boring, sometimes even tough to drive vehicles into large, smooth, quiet living rooms on wheels that can quite easily be turned into a camper, a makeshift office, or provide easy transportation for those in wheelchairs or who have mobility issues. They tend to be closer to the road than an SUV, which makes them easier to get in and out of, and they tend to have larger doors too, and they're pretty much ready for anything that you can throw at them, except off-roading. So what do you think? Could electric minivans rekindle the love of the minivan or is it SUV all the way? That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon or feed our coffee habit through Ko-fi. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. If you donate $15 a month to the channel, you'll join them on this scrolling wall. If you donate $50 a month, you'll join Jeffrey Songster, John Lyons and Ray Jean Fellows as our self-driving patrons. They get extra special goodies and if they're ever in town, they'll get a tour of the studio. While out of this world, zooming around the solar system in Elon Musk's personal Tesla Roadster, that's the Starman patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea get a personal tour of Portland if they're ever in town and we'll make sure we feed you as well. We know some great places to eat, both for vegetarians and vegans and non-vegetarians and vegans. If you're looking for something else to watch from the channel, Google thinks you might enjoy this one, so check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe and keep evolving.